to College Football Playoff Top 25, presented by Chick-fil-A. There is clear separation at the top. Three teams have staked a claim. Number one, Ohio State has a rough closing stretch ahead. And after turning back the tide, LSU might be number one in just a few moments. And the Bayou Bengals appear to have clear sailing at least until championship week. Clemson also appears to be in the express lane to the playoff. So if three spots are already on near lockdown, what a fight it is going to be for that final chair at the playoff table. Maybe up to eight teams in contention all of them flawed by performance, record, or resume. But among that group, there are two who still have a zero in the lost column. Old Goldie's never going to give up that oar, but it appears the Gophers have attached a rocket-powered outboard engine to their boat and have rode their way to validation. Baylor can do the same thing this weekend. The stakes keep getting higher. We're about to find out who's in for now. Every one of us in our own ways, through our own trials, is making our way through a season. And in its great wins and hard moments and sudden losses, there's an answer we all seek to know and all want to find. What's our place? How do we measure? Where do we stand? Much goes into that accounting, and now starts the reckoning. The strength of a schedule, the power of a conference, the quality of a victory, the proof of our results. We work, we wait, to earn and learn the answer in our own seasons. And it is intercepted! Where do we rank? Are we in? We will find out who's sitting on top and who came out of that meeting in Grapevine, Texas. This is the Selection Committee War Room where Selection Committee gathers every week, pouring over resumes. Ronnie Lott, obviously pleased with his work. Maybe so too, Joe Castiglione, the Athletic Director at Oklahoma, Rob Mullins. We'll hear from him a little bit later on, the chair of the selection committee and also the athletic director at Oregon. All of those guys, they talk about the teams that they are affiliated with. They recuse themselves Get out of here. from the discussion. These guys will participate in the discussion in its entirety. Reese Davis, Joey Galloway, David Pollock, Kirk Herbstreit joins us in just a second. So what do you want to see the most? Well, we've been waiting all season long for LSU Alabama to play, and they finally played. Uh, and, and Alabama played within five points of the second best team in the country, according to the committee with a banged up Tua. By the end of the game, could barely walk. So now we just want to see how far do they fall. Uh, there's a group of one-loss teams in there with Georgia and Oklahoma and Utah and, and Oregon sitting there. So does Alabama fall within that group and still have a shot at getting back into the top four by the end? Yes, sorry. Um, when, you, when you look at the next thing for me is the committee tells us every year that every week is a week-to-week -to -week -to basis and it's an empty slate. If that's the case, Minnesota, where are they? They today because what they did last week they beat the number four team according to the committee and they kind of dominated the game they did a great job start to finish so if it's a week to week thing with the committee how much does the Gophers go up and up and up I could see at least 10 spots it is a week to week thing and I agree with you but it's also entire body work they don't discount everything it's it's happened there, there, were six, there were six I, teams with two losses hey ahead man. of Minnesota. I, they're going mean, to go up. They gotta they're, gotta go. I, I told nope. you in the open, yeah. they, they've got a, a rocket-powered outboard engine yeah. on that boat now helping <laughs> them roll. Uh, Kirk Herbstreit joins us now. So, Kirk, what is it that you're most looking forward to seeing when we unveil the rankings in just a second? Well, I think you guys are touching on the things that are the most intriguing. You know, where Minnesota goes at last week at 17, beat number four. I, I just think the rankings themselves, you know, is anybody able to jostle and move a little bit ahead of where they were a week ago? Georgia was down at six last week. I think they could be in the top four this week. 
Uh, Joey, you bring up a good point about Alabama. You know, what, what did the committee see in that game? Uh, you talked about Tua. He still threw for, threw for over 400 yards. He doesn't play defense. I think Joe Burrow is still going through that Alabama defense. So uh, it, it was not a game that I think helped Alabama, even though the score was a little bit closer than maybe some people think. They may be sitting at five this week, uh, Reese, but uh, it'll be interesting to see where they go in future weeks. All they have really is the game at Jordan-Hare in a couple weeks against Auburn. Well, what we're going to debate is even if Alabama is four tonight, and I don't think my colleagues agree with me, I don't think they can hold it. Uh, we'll find it. But everybody else can hand it to them and let them keep it. We'll see. P.J. Flex is going to join us in a little while. Rob Mullins will talk about the committee's decisions. And, of course, you see these things just as soon as we do, so let's get to it right now. Let's take a look at this week's college football playoff rankings brought to you by Chick-fil-A, Appalachian State. Into the rankings, they were unranked in the initial outlier, and Kansas State, after the loss to Texas, they fall to 24. What do you see there, Joe? Yeah, and this is sort of that area where you start to look for that group of five team. Who's going to be the highest-ranked group of five uh, that would play in the in the Cotton Bowl this season? And it appears that Cincinnati right now would be higher ranked. We don't see them yet from 21 to 25. That's a good call. Boise State keeps finding ways to win there in 21 to 25. Now as we go 20 through 16, there are the Bearcats that Joey mentioned up three spots to 17 just behind Notre Dame. Memphis right on the heels and Cincinnati Memphis will figure all of that out in the American. Kirk, what do you see in this group? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You know, Joey's talking about that group of five. You know, that, that could be settled right there. Both those teams, Cincinnati and Memphis, moving up three slots to 17 and 18, but sets up for a potentially a huge championship game in the American. And Iowa with a game against Minnesota, so another top 20 opponent for the Gophers when we see them eventually. Let's look at 11 through 15. Michigan at 15, one spot behind Wisconsin. And there's Baylor, hey. undefeated. Now, Minnesota has taken a rocket ship up because we haven't seen them yet. Yep. Baylor can do the same thing uh, by beating Oklahoma this week. Primetime game, college game day will be there. I don't know if it's going to be a rocket ship up. They might be able to move a couple spots up, but I think what you see here is important is no Minnesota. As to be ten, continued. If Baylor goes 10-0 and, and beats Oklahoma, they'll hop the two lost teams in front of them. So they have I to. Think. They have and to. and yep. Auburn, the most important non-contender in all of college football. They have ties everywhere. They're everywhere. <laughs> because they play Georgia and Alabama, who are fighting for the fourth spot in the playoff. They've already beaten Oregon in the last second shot. So Oregon is uh, pulling for them to look as good as they can down the stretch. Auburn and Georgia this weekend. Let's look at the top ten now. And wow. the Sooners, have, you know what? Some consistency here. Clemson laughing. was penalized because they stopped a two-point conversion and survived North Carolina. Oklahoma slips the spot probably for the same reason happened to them against Iowa State on Saturday night. Sooners get Baylor this weekend. They are at number 10. Penn State wow. tumbles out of the wow. top four. They go five spots I mean, down. Herb Street's going, wow, wow. Why did you not expect Penn State to go that far down, I Kirk? No, no, I did. I'm just, I'm on the edge of my seat seeing where P.J. Fleck and the boat's going to end up here. This is great. Give me number the eight. Penn they State, be but eight. How but high, how high they will are. they go? There they, there they are. They are. They're at eight. Yeah, in, in a game where they dominated, it was a close score at the end, but if you watch the game, the way they played, they absolutely look like a top 10 team that looks like they deserve the respect that they didn't get last week. You know who you haven't seen yet? Pac-12, right? Let's see number seven. Yeah. There's one of them. The Utes still the Utes are still in a fight for the Pac-12 South. They've got UCLA this weekend. That's how odd this division is. That's UCLA right. has a losing <laughs> overall record and they still control their fate, not destiny, according to Chip Kelly. As a UCLA and Utah this weekend at number seven. So the Utes at number seven in position potentially to make the playoff. So uh, you look at this right now. Uh, Dave, what's the biggest surprise you've had? Are you upset? Because you wanted Minnesota at least a six. I right? think they should have been up there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, again, we're taking this week by week. That was a, that was an awesome performance. And here's the thing. When I, when I look at Baylor and Minnesota, I can separate the two very easily. Listen, Minnesota's been doing this for a whole month. Minnesota is on the up. You can see them. Tanner Morgan has settled in. He's doing great. He's got an elite group of wide receivers, elite group of wide receivers. I think that team has definitely been rising consistently. Baylor's been kind of just flubbing around, triple overtime, Texas Tech, double overtime, TCU. So I think Minnesota. Three points West Virginia. Three points West. I mean, it's just yeah. been kind of ick. And, and I think if Tanner Morgan can duplicate what he did against Penn State, coming into that game, he's completing 65%. He 
was up and down at times. In that game, 18 of 20, and made hard every to do that every week. <laughs> but, but he made every throw. Offensive call, game calling was terrific. Now, if they can continue that, they got to do it more than one time, I believe. And so, if he can continue that. They'll keep moving up. All right, before we go top six, Kirk, what's the biggest thing that jumped out of you, 7 through 25? Anything you saw there so far? I, I, that roar I just heard from the football facility in Minneapolis, the fact that they are up in that top eight right now and feeling good. Everything is in front of them. Let's not get carried away here. That was a great win against Penn State. They're going to Kinnick Stadium Saturday. Like, they need to just, just keep their focus right now and just try to win every single week because it's all in front of them. They got Iowa. They got Wisconsin. They could have a Big Ten championship. So, they're, they're, they're just fine with that ranking right now. They made a big jump from 17. Hey, I, I'm going to tell you, Kirk. Right now, this may sound crazy. They can afford a loss. One. Now, if they I, I win, yeah, a loss. Yeah, probably if one. They win, loss. If they win a close loss, if they win the Big Ten. If, yes. If they, okay, let's that, show right. the top yeah, six. Yeah, that did sound crazy. There, there's, a, but I'm telling you, yeah. let's start at the top because that's where less of the suspense is. LSU, as expected, has moved into the top spot. Hard. To, I mean, if you think Ohio State would win the game, that's a reasonable thing to to think. But LSU's resume is combined okay. with the weight and its plate, most deserving to be at number there's, one. There's no doubt. And listen, yeah. you, you can use your eye test to say they're really good, but you also use the body work and go, they're also Ab really, really good. Absolutely. Top two teams going to be LSU. I expect to see Ohio State at number two, and we do. Buckeyes slip out of that top spot through no fault of their own. LSU went to Alabama and won, and they are rewarded for it. Ohio State still sitting All right, there let's at get two. To three. Come on, come you on. You know who three is. Three is going to be Clemson, there and the go. Tigers are 10 and 0. They're on their way to the ACC championship game. Uh, there's nothing. There is no reasonable way that Clemson could stumble before the playoff. I mean, so they're. Well, going we to thought be that the against North Carolina also, and, and they That's came true. close to stumbling. Now Wake That's Forest, true. they have this week, who hasn't looked good. They lost last week, so you know we, we don't expect it. All right. Let's see who number four is for the moment. Let's see when it gets weird. <sighs> number four is Georgia. So Georgia hasn't yep. always looked sharp. Great offense has been challenged at times, but the Bulldogs, they've got that, they've got that, it wasn't the magnitude, but they've got the Ohio State-like loss from the last couple of years on that the resume. It wasn't pretty. Penn State lost a couple of years ago as well. But I think when you look at Georgia, there's two really big wins with Florida and Notre Dame. Those are two big wins that they're, they're going to get credit for. And number five is Alabama. Just behind on the outside. It's going to take a lot of stumbling on the outside for the Crimson Tide to move into that top four. And if that doesn't happen, this will be the first playoff without Alabama. And Oregon still with only the one loss in the last second to Auburn. So Oregon in position uh, perhaps to make it to the college football playoff. LSU has its highest ranking in the playoff era at number one. Minnesota makes the largest jump into the top ten. They moved up nine spots, showing that, as David mentioned, the committee is watching week to week and rewarding performance. Baylor has the lowest ranking, the 9-0 team from the Power Five in the college football playoff era. And no team. That's awesome. Nobody held their spot. Kirk, you see it now. You see the top four. Georgia at number four. Are you in agreement with what the committee uh, selected at this juncture? Yeah, right. As we sit right now with the results from last week, uh, I, I thought Georgia would be at four personally and Alabama at five. I, I thought Minnesota might be up in the top six. But uh, what David said is, is accurate at this point. I know they had the loss against South Carolina at home. It was not pretty. But I think what happened last week opened the door for them to slide from six up into the top four because of impressive wins against Notre Dame and against Florida. So for now, no issue at all. The interesting thing is as we move forward is Alabama. Uh, if Georgia eventually loses, whether it's to Auburn or it's the SEC championship game, those are two big hurdles. Mm -hmm. What happens to Alabama? Do they move up or is there a little bit of a ceiling and teams behind them potentially going up and over them? By the way, Reese, I don't think that would happen until the last weekend when you start to see conference championships potentially out of the Pac-12 or the Big 12 is when they might go by Bama. That, I, I agree. That's why I say I don't think Alabama can do anything to hold a spot or to move up. What they have to ha have hope for is to have everyone else hand well, it well, to them by messing up. Let me ask you a question real quick, though, to that. Do you, do you think if Minnesota wins the next two weeks, they'd be up behind Bama? 
I think I mean, we're talking be... about at the end. I'm talking about it. But I'm saying before end. the end. That's before the end. That's before the Big 12, Big 10 championship game. I, I think they could pass up Bama before that point. Probably so. With, with yeah, but that, that's what I'm saying. That, that I think wouldn't the be the one. behind them have to give it to them. They have yeah, to but that wouldn't games. be the one that mattered at the end of the day. Oregon at six and Utah at seven is the one that is going to threaten Alabama's ability to stay where they are because you assume that Georgia, LSU have to play one another. Ohio State has a tough one coming up. Uh, Minnesota have to get past, past Ohio State eventually. But at six and seven, if I'm the Pac-12, and we talked all season long almost that the Pac-12 was out of this thing, now sitting at six and seven, they look like they're in a pretty good spot because of the teams ahead of them. Now, look, it's quite a task for Minnesota to go undefeated. I understand that. Definitely. But I think the Pac-12 teams have to be wary of Minnesota because yeah. they've got Iowa ranked, yeah. Wisconsin ranked, still in the regular season schedule, and then likely a date with Ohio State, potentially Penn State again, but probably Ohio State. So Minnesota, Kirk, really has everything in front of them, and I think the Pac-12 has to also root for them to get out of the way because they have still more growth potential, even more than they've shown so far. Yeah, there, there's a lot of rankings uh, still ahead of them. I think if you're a Pac-12 fan, or especially an Oregon and a Utah fan, I think what Joey's saying, we've been kind of watching those two teams now for a few weeks and seeing the potential uh, meeting that they would have in a Pac-12 championship. We kept saying, if there's a one-loss Oregon and a one-loss Utah, be careful. While everyone's riding off the Pac-12, with the chaos in front of them, the Pac-12 champion could still be very, very much alive to get into the, the Final Four at the end of it. Minnesota, to me, yeah, they have Iowa, yeah, they have Wisconsin, but if they don't beat Ohio State, they're knocked out, and then that opens the door for a discussion potentially at the end with the Pac-12 champion, a Big 12 champion, and Alabama sitting there trying to get to that fourth spot. That's what I see this thing as it's kind of trending. If Ohio State and LSU and Clemson all went out, there's, there's one, two, and three. Uh, now we're sitting here talking about that four spot with, uh, with the three teams I just mentioned. Well, and, and Oregon and Utah really need each other to do well. Like, yeah, they yeah. have to both yeah, right. be one-loss teams when they get to that point. They need each other to do well so they can get that signature win because here's the deal. If you look at Oregon and Alabama, you want to talk about uh, Alabama only beating A&M, that's a better win probably than Oregon has. That's a better win than probably Utah has. So, you know, one other thing, too, to point out here is the Big 12's in trouble. That's what I was going to ask. The Big 12 is, I mean, if you want to point to a conference that has a good chance of being left out, once they start beating each other, I mean, you look at 10 and 13 playing each other, that doesn't give them a, a big boost up the rankings either, so they're going to be kind of be hanging in the same spot. Well, what we assume was their best team has been in a struggle. Oklahoma has lost, and then they win, they stop a two-point conversion last week to win. And so they should be in trouble. It's not like a situation where uh, Minnesota's looked really good, and we're talking about them. The Big 12, on the other hand, has tried to be in trouble because their best team, which we assume is Oklahoma, hasn't looked great. Now, if Baylor can beat them, I don't know that they get the same credit that a Minnesota just got. But as far as the Big 12 is concerned, I think it would help them if Baylor won that game. Now, uh, they would be an undefeated uh, champion undefeated. potentially if Baylor could win out. Kirk, what do you think? Well, I, I think Baylor's the wild card. I, I think Oklahoma is not helping themselves with the way they're playing. We were so excited at the beginning, the first five games of the year, about, hey, this Oklahoma team is no longer just having to outscore people. They, they, they got a defense. And in the last couple of weeks, they've given up 41 and 48, and all of a sudden it's like, what the heck has happened to this, or 40, uh, 40, yeah, 41 and 48, what the heck has happened to, to the OU defense? Now they've, I don't, I don't think it's helping their cause as far as if they get caught up in a cluster. They, they of course, have the Baylor game this week. They have, tech, uh, they, uh, they have one more game, the Big 12 championship. Oklahoma State is still out there. To me, I think the Big 12's best case could be Baylor. If Baylor were to upset OU this weekend, they have Texas left. They would have a Big 12 championship game left. And then it comes down to what you just said, how far of a jump do they get by beating Oklahoma at home? Do they get up in there with Utah and Oregon to give themselves possibly a chance going into the last weekend of the year? You know, there, there is another debate. And we're not going to dive in here. I'm just going to be called foreshadowing a little bit that we're going to get in later. There's no the, telling America. The, 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 best, exactly. the best debate, the most compelling one, is you have these one-loss champions and you have Georgia lose a close game at Auburn this week but then beat LSU in the SEC championship game. Uh, then you have two lost Georgia, but SEC champion. You got to figure LSU already has a spot. One no a week. What, one, one a week. <laughs> one a week. You have one a week where it's like if this and this and this. <laughs> then it's interesting. I, yeah. I wanted to give you a chance to think about your position oh, on such oh, a matter. Got it. 
Yeah. We, we wrote that. You, you, you know what? You know what? You know what Joey's it. position is. Whatever the rankings are right yeah, now, exactly. they should stay right go. in that order Let's until roll. somebody loses. <laughs> and move up. Exactly. Clemson is underrated. Yeah, underrated. It. Come on. <laughs> All right. More, much more coming up. PJ Fleck is going to join us in just a little bit. Coming off the biggest win he's had at Minnesota by far, but much more ahead. The Gophers head coach and the crowd surf right on into college football playoff top 25 Rob Mullins his uh, job as the chair of the selection committee we'll talk to him about the change at the top first time a number one team has won and fallen out of the top spot in the college football playoff era Rob will answer lots of questions coming up and basketball on the way Phil Knight Invitational from Portland Oregon number 15 Rob the athletic director there taking on James Weissman who I, I guess is going to play 9 Eastern on ESPN and ESPN app. College Football Playoff Top 25 is presented by Chick-fil-A. Try their grilled nuggets for a bite-sized backyard taste of the grill on the go. And in part by AT&T.